Well, Merry Christmas, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is time to talk 2021, the entire season here for the U.S. Uh, Corn Belt and the world, and uh, a lot of risk and opportunity here. So, um, longer video than normal, but I think you'll like what you have to hear. Um, first thing you have to do if you're going to talk about long range weather, predicting temperature, rainfall, and snowfall by week, by mile, a year out, everywhere on Earth, is you got to dump what we learned at Rutgers in physics and fluid dynamics. And so, we think statistics and climate cycles, it's a, a trillion times a trillion times a billion statistics and 24 climate cycles, trillions and trillions of forecasts. So again, it's a lot of crazy math in what we do. And I think uh, when you see how we do it, um, you'll have a little more confidence um, and it's the right way to do it. Um, for over 18 years, we've been working with some of the world's most successful and admired companies. Uh, again, I always say that uh, predicting not only temperature, rain and snow for them, but also predicting their sales by week, by store, by e-commerce everywhere on earth. The group that the team here actually enjoys working with the most is these farmers. Again, about 8,700 uh, folks that we work with, both uh, through the Advantage Acre app and through our FarmCast solution. So again, God bless our farmers. Again, uh, you're the group that we like to work with the most. <clears throat> First thing you have to do, again, is you have to dump uh, physics and fluid dynamics. If there was just one storm in the ocean, that would be one drop. That would be very easy physics, fluid dynamics. We'd be able to predict things perfectly. The reality is we have millions of interactions of storms, uh, both at the surface, aloft, and it's pure chaos. So physics and meteorology simply do not work beyond a couple weeks. Uh, it's chaos. Um, so that's not what we do. Um, so how do we do it? It's a lot of statistics. If you've had a record hot dry period, what happens the next year? Cold and snowy. If it's cold and snowy, then the next year, maybe cold and snowy again. So it's trillion pond times a trillion times a billion statistics, 24 climate cycles. We look at them very differently than most meteorologists. Uh, again, it's a totally different approach, uh, but again, it's a much more stable way, an accurate way, and we'll talk about that here at the end of how it's possible. Um, one big statistics and climate cycle right now that's of concern is obviously La Nina. Um, it's not only that we're La Nina and it's moderate, uh, models have been waffling between moderate to strong, but right now moderate is just a huge change from this time last year when it was a weak El Nino, very warm Pacific Ocean to very cold Pacific Ocean. Um, it's also rare to have a moderate La Nina, a cold PDO, a positive warm AMO, and a solar minimum. All these things teaming up together have huge implications for our world's weather. Um, the reality is they don't team up very often, or, you know, only a couple times every hundred years. So it's an unusual cycle, to say the least, and it's having huge already implications of dry here in America. What typically happens in just a general easy broad circulation pattern is that you have sinking air over the Americas, U.S. and Brazil and rising air over uh, Malaysia, Southeast Asia, the Southwest Pacific. So rising air means a lot of rain, thunderstorms. Sinking air in the spring, summer means warm and dry. So we've already seen that materialize in the US and Brazil. And so we can in part thank La Nina uh, as to what, what's happening and what will continue to happen here in 2021. Looking at uh, as of 15 December here, dry to drought phases in the US is the most in eight years. Currently, 67%, according to the USDA, is in D0, D4 phases. We haven't seen that since 2012. Uh, so the second most in 20 years after some extremely wet, uh, you know, very low drought conditions in 1819. So a huge change. We think this will maintain its uh, coverage and expand uh, into the central and south. So December 20 map left there, again, shows the current conditions in the parallel to 2012. We think this, again, shifts into the central and the south as we go through the 2021 season, and we'll explain that. Um, we do think there'll be some improving uh, conditions for uh, soil moisture in the Pacific Northwest, Northern Rockies, but um, not a lot of crops grown in those regions. Uh, one factor will be winter snowfall here. We actually still think it'll be 8% below average nationally. Um, we actually that may be even lower than what we're suggesting here in our year-head outlook. Um, so up 35% from last year's very anemic low snow totals across the U.S., uh, La Niñas are not usually big snow years. Uh, they're typically actually well below average. So again, this may be a little bit overdone. If there's going to be some heavier snow, it's probably going to be in the eastern Ohio Valley and uh, the Pacific Northwest for sure. We believe the bigger snow year is going to be 2021, 2022, next year, not this year. That season could be an epic one, 2013, 2014, which was a very snowy winter. So that might be next year for our snow lovers out there. When we break down the snow and the precip here for the winter months across the U.S., this yellow area shows the winter, early spring um, precipitation trends. So yellow areas are below normal, uh, 80 to 94 percent of normal, meaning 6 percent to 20 percent below average. Those peach and browns, you're getting 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60 percent below average precipitation. Uh, so pretty widespread across the country. Here in the east, again, we believe it'll be a, a wet start to winter, but uh, diminishing um, as we go through the late January, February, March time frame. Uh, so even here on the east coast, while we're pretty soggy right now, we'll probably dry out as in the late 
late winter, spring time frame. So a lot of the country with dry, hard to find a, a lot of wet in this type of cycle, which is again common with La Nina. Already seeing the moderate to high risk for Brazil crops. Um, again, so they're planting in October, December of this year was the driest in 17 years for their first crop. So Parana, very dry. Uh, Northeast Argentina, driest in 13 years, second driest in 35. We expect these conditions to continue in that map left through March 21, uh, through their you know early harvest season. 60% of Brazil's soybeans and 40% of their full season corn is likely to have dry conditions, reduced yields. This scenario happened in 2016 when uh, Conab kept lowering and lowering and lowering yield estimates, ultimately by 27%. Um, we're not going that bullish this year, but we think they'll be lowering numbers from their current level by 15 to 25%. So they certainly expect lower trends. They can't possibly know this because they don't have an accurate view of what the weather is likely to do through the rest of their growing season. So we do think you're going to continue to see uneasiness and news as we go through our spring season here coming out of uh, South America. Um, the other implication here is that this delayed planting, delayed harvesting impacts Brazil's second crop, the so Serena crop, which typically is planting in March, April next year. They'll be planting in dry soils, pushing their crops, those crops into the high risk, hot, dry period uh, for the second crop. So a lot of risk coming out of Brazil. Uh, and again, 2016 might be a parallel for what we're seeing. As we get back to the spring planting here in the U.S., again, so our March, April, May time frame, we believe that it's going to be the driest in eight years. Um, so we think by um, at least Memorial Day or sooner, 62% of the country will remain in dry to drought phases, pushing it to a 2013 type scenario. Um, nothing like we've seen last couple of years. 2019, obviously, epically low drought of all time, near historic lows with only 9%. Last year, I think the saving grace was that uh, the wet conditions uh, in planting in, in May was that that soil moisture actually helped carry us through the, the crop season. So as it got hotter and drier through the summer season, uh, that good soil moisture was kind of saving the day, uh, even though we had some reduced yields, certainly was a plus. Uh, we don't have that going in in the 2021 season. I think they'll be planting in very dry, dusty soils. Uh, so it might, your fields might look like this, uh, pretty dusty um, across most of the, of the U.S. As we look to about the, on the same timing of our planting is China. So they're pretty much a northern latitude uh, growing region. They plant similar to us. They've had two really tough years. 2019, uh, wettest in 21 years across China, negatively impacted their crop yields. Uh, 2020 was near record hot. They had great planting in 2020, but then just uh, too much rain in the summer again, impacting their yields again for the second year in a row. And now we think three years in a row, they're going to have a spring 2021. We're looking at uh, the coldest spring conditions in eight years, wettest than five. So we believe that's going to delay their planting uh, season. Frost risk. Um, unlike the U.S., where several hundred thousand farmers make up our, our corn production, in, in China, it's a lot of little farmers, 2.2 million. Um, so they don't really have the benefits of some of the big farms that we have here in America. So you get a lot of farmers are going to get um, pretty hard hit here and not, not maybe be able to replant. Um, as we go into their summer months here in China, and this map left is 15 May through 15 September precip, so a lot of dry on that map. Uh, some are likely to be the driest in 11 years across China, uh, growing regions. Um, but again, we believe that early soil moisture, you know, that wet spring may carry the load here, kind of like we had here in the, in the U.S., where we had good soil moisture and then hot and dry as it went through the summer, but it, it saved a lot of folks at least getting some yield as opposed to nothing. Um, but again, risk coming out of China for the third year in a row. China then always obviously looks to the Ukraine first for exports of um, Ukraine's crops. Um, so Ukraine looks pretty good. Uh, we have the warmest, driest spring planting in three years. Uh, we think that warm, dry trend continues through early summer, early midsummer. We do think that by midsummer into late fall, they'll start to get wetter. Um, so probably not going to have the as extreme conditions in the Ukraine as that we had this year. Um, so probably not enough weather issues to impact their exports. But again, Enough, maybe, that there's going to be some concern, again, between China and Ukraine and, and what's happening uh, in those areas. So, again, something to watch in our spring time frame. Um, this is the March through November 2021 entire Corn Belt Outlook. So this is our, our year-ahead outlook. This is pretty much an eight-state aggregate from really going from Nebraska to Ohio and maybe some of the fringe areas of uh, southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, South Dakota. So it's an eight-state aggregate. Obviously, any given farm can be a little different here, but... Chart left is the temperature trends. So we see uh, red bars are above normal trends and blue bars are where we think it's below normal trends in terms of temperature. Um, so if we look at this, we really don't see any uh, late frost risk. Uh, after mid-late April, uh, warm. Uh, so we don't see that at all. May should be probably record hot, warm, dry May. Um, so planting early this year may not be a bad thing. Um, 
get that early pollination looks okay in late June, early July, maybe a little slightly cooler period there. And then if you're planting late and pollinating into that uh, late July time frame, mid July time frame actually, a lot of risk. Uh, that could be the hottest period of summer, certainly some 90s, 100s. Um, so that looks risky. Um, and then as we get into the fall, again, we don't see a lot of risk. Fall, we have the warmest in five years, above average, driest in eight years, below average precip. So dusty again, but uh, fall harvest looks pretty good. Um, so no real frost risk there. The, um, so obviously if you have a hotter, drier season here, we're looking at more weeds, more pests. You know, bugs love it when it's hot and like this. Um, less disease issues, less disease concern, less nitrogen needs, obviously if we're not washing it all out with heavy rain. So um, more weeds, more pests. Uh, again, probably the, the good news here is you could maybe ask folks in Iowa what they wish they would have planted, uh, varieties and hybrids, and what they wish they would have done, because that's probably going to be a bellwether here for 2021 chart right here is actually the precip trends. Uh, peaches are below normal and greens are above normal. So we see a lot of dry weeks um, across the Corn Belt as a whole. Um, ironically, here in 2020, we had uh, tornadoes were down 15%, well below average. Uh, hail was down 44%, back to almost historic lows for hail damage uh, in the U.S. this year, which is very, very low. But as they say, it only takes one. We had the derecho event in August in Iowa and that uh, Again, in a down tornado season, a down thunderstorm season, and a down hail season, it took one night to basically uh, destroy a couple billion dollars for the crops. Um, so tornadoes and hail, again, we believe will be below average in 2021, uh, maybe uh, similar to this year. So that's some good news. It just diminishes the risk for farmers overall. Uh, unfortunately, when it comes to hurricanes, we do not see that. We think uh, 23 plus hurricanes next year is our early outlook, making it the third most active season in 165 years next year. That's on top of this year's record 31 systems, uh, record shattering season here in 2021, 2020. Um, we'll talk about the hurricanes here in a minute. But uh, again, so uh, a lot of risk here, uh, something to be watching here as we go through the 2021 season. Uh, farmers, again, I, most of our farmers are getting our Farmcast solution. It's a daily PDF uh, email report. Get it before you wake up in the morning. It's a neat report. The only thing you have to do every year is just go to the website once to uh, set your planting date. So don't forget in March, April next year to go to the website, set your planting date, and then you'll get this report every morning in your inbox. Um, neat thing, it tracks how much growing degree days, rainfall, temperatures you've had since planting, what's going to happen, what happened yesterday, what's happening today, all that detailed data. And then a uh, neat snapshot of the hourly conditions here today. So I've got any activities for the current day and the next week and then a week after that. And then more importantly on page four is the year ahead outlook uh, for again, your farm locations. So it's a neat tool, kind of get you to think uh, proactively as opposed to reaction. So just a little, little better proactive planning than um, you know, just re reacting to the, the short range forecast. Pam, uh, our ag meteorologist here in the office for many years now, just awesome report she puts out every Monday, um, weekly grains report. Um, obviously, this time of year, she's talking Brazil. Um, as we get into our growing season, she'll be obviously talking U.S., China, Ukraine. So again, a, a nice report produced every Monday uh, mid-morning um, from Pam. So I got a lot of insights uh, in that report that you get. Uh, farmers always always get our hurricane outlook. I know it's fringe for the, the Corn Belt folks, but your deep south Georgia, Florida folks, um, we did really well this year in 2020, saying it was going to be a, a very active year, uh, preseason, and it was. Um, unlike most, we actually say where storms will hit. So we had Louisiana, Florida, and the Northeast, our high-risk areas here in 2020. Uh, we got clobbered here in the Northeast. Um, we had ICS uh, dumped epic rain and knocked out power to 13 million people from North Carolina to New England. So it was a pretty bad storm. Um, Louisiana obviously clobbered all season long with five, six events. Um, Florida escaped, uh, so that was the one area where we didn't didn't really get much in our prediction there. But uh, we believe in 2021, they are the target. Um, so Florida is our early outlook for potentially catastrophic systems, uh, kind of like Louisiana had, probably going to shift that to Florida, Georgia. So some of those fringe crops, uh, citrus and corn down in Georgia, Alabama, um, certainly have some risk as we go to the 2021 season. A cool tool that we have on our website here, and some farmers use it, some don't even know it exists, but that's what we thought we'd remind you about it. Uh, it's a neat alerting tool, uh, email or text. Um, you basically can go in and set any custom alert you want to. Bill, I want to be alerted to uh, high temperatures, low humidity, low winds, because I got to do some spraying. Uh, this will do it for your location. It'll send you a text, hey, we think that's going to happen next week, Thursday. So you'll know exactly when the weather conditions will be, exactly what you want. So you put in your data here, it's real simple. Um, you just want dry, just put in dry, and it'll tell you, okay, it looks like it'll be dry next week, Thursday. So it's a neat uh, email text-based alert, uh, and again, a, a lot of farmers uh, maybe underutilize this tool, but uh, again, a lot of tools are available on our website. Again, I know a lot of farmers uh, 
may not uh, just like the email, give me the text, give me the PDF bill, and we're good to go. But uh, if you want to slice and dice periods, uh, no matter how you like to look at the weather, whether it's charts or calendars or data or maps, uh, you name it, our website does it. So it's a, a neat tool available to farmers for their locations. Uh, and again, this is available anywhere in the world. Now, if you're going to talk year ahead weather, you better believe in the year ahead process. So we're going to prove that uh, we don't hide behind accuracy ever. This is our year ahead forecast. The bars are the year ahead forecast of hot and blues are cold. Dotted lines, what actually happened. So if the dotted lines on the tip of every bar, we were perfect. Um, we're never perfect. There's no such thing as perfection and God keeps us humble. Um, but uh, again, what you'll find is that the year ahead error in these forecasts is less than a week two short range forecast. So in this example of precip, again, the green bars are forecast of wet and peach bars are dry. It does really good at capturing the driest in eight or the wettest in six or the wettest in 26 uh, years. It's uh, very good at capturing those trends with skill more accurate than a week two short range forecast. This is the Corn Belt year head accuracy uh, for the past few years. Again, so the temperatures on the left and precip on the right trending in the 80% range. Again, so again, this is more accurate than a week two short range forecast and we can prove that. So typically a one to seven day error that you get from anybody, your short range forecast has error of about 4.6 degrees. Uh, we actually trended here recently in the fall about 3.1 degrees. So even our short range better than the typical industry average. A week two forecast, short range forecast, eight to 14 day forecast has 6.9 degree error. What you see on the left here, these uh, blue cities listed is the actual error in our year ahead forecast. So we're actually in a lot of cases outperforming a week one short range forecast. Don't always do that but we always outperform usually a uh, week two short range forecast. So anything we said a year ago for week two, we're pretty much gonna beat the uh, competition hands down. So it's a, it's a neat way to plan. It's why a lot of uh, big companies rely on what we do because it's just, again, so much more accurate than traditional physics. Um, we produce lots of free content. If you know the folks over there at Successful Farming, agriculture.com, um, we put out stories in their magazine that goes out to 400 and some thousand subscribers. So again, if you check us out there, we're always putting out uh, long lead content. Uh, they need the content three months in advance. Uh, so we're always long range, really the only ones that could actually give them this type of content. Um, Chrissy Klinger in our office does a phenomenal job. She puts out a, a weekly report as well um, on agriculture.com. It's really gaining back some of her reports have been top four most viewed. So she's got a lot of cool content on agriculture.com. Um, thought we'd talk real quick. Again, uh, you can go to our website here for more information here. So I thought I'd uh, show that real quick here and uh, just how you can actually look at some of our tools. When you come to weathertrends360.com, you can scroll down the page here and see the industries that we serve. So obviously we wanna talk agriculture. Come to our agricultural landing page. Uh, there's a neat video describing FarmCast, what we do, how farmers use it uh, to be proactive and not reactive. So it's a neat video. Applications, and then um, this is a worthwhile video. Uh, Noah Freeman's been a long time, seven year client at AgriLiant Genetics and how it's ingrained in Advantage Acre, and how he was a huge skeptic seven, eight years ago, and now a huge believer. So he can talk about uh, how what we do is possible. And then uh, also a neat white paper on how it's used to uh, enhance crop yields with farmers. So. It's a neat tool. Scroll down the page here in FarmCast. Again, you get all the things we've talked about, daily FarmCast, weekly commodity reports, talk to me, Pam, Rich, Chrissy, any of the meteorologists here, um, seasonal hurricane outlooks, you name it, uh, custom alerts. It's a neat tool. So signing up on the website is actually easy. It's $3.99 a year. Um, you enter your farm locations. First thing is pick your ag plan. So you want to choose that plan. You know, input all your information here. This takes about five minutes. Swipe your credit card, and within a few minutes of that, you'll have your FarmCast uh, in your email inbox every single day. Um, again, and all the web tools, the commodity report. So it's a neat tool. It's actually cheaper on SuccessfulFarming.com, uh, about a 10% discount over there if you want to subscribe through the agriculture.com folks. So neat tool. Uh, farmers love it. Again, it's just proactive planning versus reactive planning. I apologize for not having Pam and Chrissy and Rich on the call today, some of our ag meteorologists. Again, there's a, quite a few of us here that support you. You can always email us support at wt360.com or call us here. Um, in the COVID world, we're all remote. So again, it's been a little challenging here. So we, uh, But they're always there to help. And uh, everyone pretty much loves Pam, Chrissy, Rich. So, um, And I'm here too. So anytime you need to uh, never bet the ranch or the farm, I say, on our year ahead forecast, but uh, making Small decisions can have huge financial rewards for, for what we do. So we hope you have a Merry Christmas, a happy, healthy, prosperous 2021. Uh, Lord willing, we get back to a, the old normal. I know we all would love that here in 2021. So God bless you folks. Uh, we love you and uh, have a great year. And uh, we will talk to you in 2021.